Okay, so in this model, just using the revolve tool. Whatever this thing is there, and whatever these shapes are there, you can just use some polygon. Or you want to convert this into polygon also, you can just convert this mesh. So go to modify, convert. Uh, we have this one. Convert nubs to polygon. Control points apply. Now this nub subject will be like polygon now. You can just see this. So a polygon element. Press 3. It will be smooth. So I don't need this curve. I can just select and delete. Now this is your nubs to polygon and name this as a table. So table underscore G. And freeze that as well. Go to modify. Center pivot. And go to modify freeze transform. And let's place that into my camera view now. So go to the camera view. Before that, I'll just want to extrude this out the face. So select this faces from the same point and start extruding that. So go to perspective. Let us see if this is what we have. So I can make it separate piece and duplicate also, so that will be better. So instead of using this, so shift right click, duplicate face, that is separate face. Then I can just make it from the same extrude now. So select the face now. So start extruding this out. Press it down. And how this shape is over there. So press 4. Press start adjusting. Okay, so while making this extrude, you can just make it from the side view of that. Or let's make something box. So let's use, go to create, polygon, cube. So it will be properly placed over there. Press 4. And just place it in this proper place now. So once I place it over here, this is where I'll be just starting this cube. So start placing it here. Okay, so how much I want that uh, position of that and how much scale I want, I'll just scale it little smaller size. And let's have it. And we can draw the path to create the shape over here. Okay, so go to the vertex, start adjusting this. I just have the duplicate copy of the same thing on it. So I press much closer and draw the path. Create Civic curve tool, draw this path from here. Press enter. Uh, now can you start extruding from the same thing? So select the face, shift right click, extrude face, and I can just select this and this. Click the face, shift select this, shift right click, extrude, and you have this. And you can increase the divisions to get that. And we also have an option over here. So if I just come down to this, we have tapper. So once I make it tapper, you'll get that shape. Okay, so now, so add some of the segments according to the shape. So here you just want little more rounded. So add one segment here, here, make it more round like this. Now, now we can just have the duplicate copies of that, the same shape. And we can just make this bevel edge. So select all this now. All this. Okay, so I'll just select all the faces and give bevel edge for that. So shift right click, bevel and increase the offset or it. So fraction how much you want. And just have the duplicate copy of the same thing or it. So press 4. 
and I can adjust the pivot point of this over here. So press D, adjust it in the center, and then have a pivot point of or this. So control D now first, rotate this, and press Shift D. So it will be there in all the sides. I'll press three for this. So this and this will be same. Okay, so you can group this whole thing together. Now I can just select all the shapes. Go to modify, wrist transformation, edit, delete all by type history, and let's group that. Control G. I can go to modify, center pivot. Huh. So I can just use the center pivot now, and I can just name it as table underscore grp so this will be the group and we can adjust this for pivot point later down so we can just place it down so if you want to scale it or something what you have to do is you have to adjust the pivot point plus d and bring it down over here so from this point we can just scale that object inside the scene now go to the camera view and this is my chair let's bring this This is the press 4. Now we can just see this uh, chair where it has to be. If you want to hide all these things, you can hide it. All this mesh. So I can see this uh, more properly. So separately, you can just select all the things and place it there. So separate, separate layers, we can just place that whole thing. So again, this I don't want to be there. So create a new layer, add that. And this is the chair. So group is selected and you can just place at that point and press R, scale this down to match that place. Okay, so press W, push it in this place. And just start scaling that one. Okay, so it should be touching the ground. So how much I just want to place it like this. Just fine. Okay, so we are just making all this uh, separate separate pieces now. So select this, right click, assign existing material, Lambert 3 or Lambert 2, it was there. So let's use it. So save the file and Okay, so all the uh, things, whatever this things are there. So it is all about revolve. So anything we are seeing, it is so here is everything you can just make using the revolve tool. Most of the things inside this. Now let's start modeling this part over here and this pipes and all these things are there. So it is in this direction and then there is pipe like this and which is over here. So just check from the side view. Now I can just model this, so press, go to left, orthographic view, side view, and press 4, and from where you want uh, that thing to come out here. So this is the place I want uh, some design to come, so let's make this as a camera view now. Which one? Hmm. No, no, if there is some details, then you do it. So for this, we don't require any of this uh, detail. So there is not much in thing for detail. Huh. So wall, I made that because of the shape, because of the stylized thing. Uh, now, if you just want to add this uh, model over here, so which you want to adjust, let's go for the perspective and check that. So this part. Okay, so this is the thing which you need to model it from this view. So I can just start from doing it over here. So this is the place. And let's go to the curve to create. Or I can just use the cylindrical shape also for creating this. What is over here. Okay, so just use, if you want to use cylinder, go to the polygon. Let's use the cylindrical shape. Press E, J, and rotate. 
fix it. So how much you want the size of that? So fix it or and I want to place it in the proper place over here. So you can just see that the position of that where it should be in this view. Let's fix it back. And inside the perspective, you can just check it where I am placing that over here so that it is proper or not. Press 5. It should be here. So this is the wall, it should be touching the wall. And then I can just see my camera. Okay, so the number of segments, how much you want for this, you can just reduce. So starting, we will just keep around 8. So that is enough. Okay. Because when I press 3, it will be smooth. So now I can just have this uh, number of segments now. So press R, scale it down. Yeah, select all these faces. Press W. And I can just isolate it. So it will be easy. So let's isolate. So it is easy for us to model. F for zooming. And I can just go to the vertex, start modeling it out. So how this shape will be, so it will... Extrude face, press R. Scale that down. <coughs> Again G, W. Pull it out. And just have some, this reference open. You can just see this. So there is one pipe which is going inside it, and there is some shape. Okay, so let's use this. Is it? Hmm. So you can just make it little more down. Press R, scale it down this one, and then extrude this. Press G, shift right click, extrude face, push it down. Again, press G R, scale it down. Again G. You pull this up. So this much if you want. You can just check it later. And if you just press 3 on your keyboard. So you can just see the smoothness of that. So it, where you want that segments now. So you just want the segments over here. This place. And here as well. To see that. Otherwise you will not be seeing that details. Here also. Yeah. So when I start adding the details over here, so we can just see this shape. Now here you want some segments. So inside edge loop tool start adding this over here also. Shift right click, insert edge loop tool, press start. What happens with this? Press one. Yeah, so I can just add that over here. Okay, so from here only you just want some of the faces to go up, uh, like it will be connected up. So you can also draw the path from here and I'll just make this circular shape from this. So select this faces now, shift right click, extrude face, press R, scale this down. Okay, and from here only you want this, so you can make it as circularized, so shift right click. Circularize component. So you get that uh, shape over here. So press R, scale you this down. Oh, but if it has to be from the same shape which is extruding out. Okay. So shift right click, extrude face R again. So some loop you want to give for that. And from here you want to extrude. So go to the side view. Let's start extruding from here, it will come in this place. So give the path for that. So go to CV curve tool. Which one? Ah, so here it is only soft edge and hard edge. So you can give the crease too. So if you give the crease, it will be hard uh, over here. So if it is smooth, now I can just use this. So if you have this like this which is coming over here, so you can just start adjusting the shape of that pipe. So this you don't want this much big. 
here is a wall that I can just start extruding from this itself. So you can just see that there is something which is, since it is isolated, you cannot see that. And we have this arc which is, that is a different place. So go to modify, center pivot, press W, now start adjusting in the same place. So press Q and isolate again. And we have it. Okay, so we have this shape and now we can just start extruding from this itself. So select the faces. Select all this face, shift select this one, shift right click extrude face and increase the divisions. So you can just increase how much you want for that shape. Okay. So even after doing the modification you can always have that option. So go to uh, press 4 and I can always adjust this curves over here. So if you feel that the curve needs to be adjusted to be more round, so I can adjust the curve shape more round even after doing this. You can still modify, see that's how you want this to be. Okay, so now if I press 3, press 5, that is how we will have it. And from here itself we just want, uh, now here we can just see that some of the details which is losing it over here, press 1. So I can just add some details over here. So insert edge loop tool, I can just start adding some loop here and in this place also, let's add some loop so here also. Let's press 3. <coughs> so we'll have that nice loop from there. Okay, so where you want to add the segments, I can just start adjusting that over here. So we'll start modeling. Now what is this shape? which you want to make now, so you can just see it over here. So it is going inside, then it comes out and this also I can just use some kind of revolve uh, to do that. And inside that if you want some holes for the shower thing, you can also add that using boolean or whatever. So we will not use the boolean, we will just use some different tool. So let's use this over here. Okay, okay so from here only we will just start modeling, we will just not use since it is polygon. So use the faces, let's fix this first, so go to the vertex now, press W, start adjusting it, make it straight and then you select this faces and then start extruding that one. So extrude face, press R, scale it, again G, W. Okay, over here again G R scale it down so this will be more circular shape now so scale it up again G W scale this is much more rounded shape so G W bring it down press R and scale Okay, so just scale like this and we have this shape out here, which is like this shape now. So whatever the adjustment you want to do now, so you can just start scaling that. This also, just start scaling it up. So if you just still want more rounded shape. Uh, so here if you just want to make some rounded shape, what I can do is I can just also use some kind of sphere and cut that and I can just fix that over here. So instead of getting this shape more round, so if I just press 3, this is how I will get this part. If you just want little more rounded shapes uh, over here, so this if I just want to bring it down more, let's fix that. And what are the shapes you want to add still? So go to the edge, double click, scale this down. So I just want more round shape over here. So there. Okay, so any time you feel that it is very small uh, shape over here, so you can just see that where this is coming inside my camera view, I think I need to bring it more down, so just bring it more down this shape, so go to the vertex, start adjusting, pull this down, 
and I need to scale also. So till here, this is that shape which is coming. So how much we can adjust to this uh, match to this? Let me start again. So go to the vertex now. So I feel that this has to be much more bigger size. So it is too small. So let's make this much bigger. So scale, press R, scale it. How much big you want for this space? Okay, so there is always history with this. So we can just see this, there is history of that. Okay, so uh, if you want to adjust the curve a little more far, or you want to adjust this, okay, so that is one advantage with this history. So if you delete the history, it will go, but you just want to keep that history for this model. Now press one. And let's start adding some loops to this. So go to the vertex, start scaling this everything in the same place. R, scale it. Since I scaled that, it is having the issue. So insert edge loop tool, add it here. So here it will be hard. So press 3 now. Okay, so how much far you want. So this is fine. So start still, I feel that it is more down over here, it is more towards right. And still I feel I can just make it more, press 1. So add more segment, insert edge loop tool, start adding one loop. W, press R, just want to scale it more. Okay, so now we have the uh, object now, so just start checking that whether it is isolate, end isolate now, you can just check it over here, so this is, this looks fine, so it is on the top of that, so if you feel that according to your scene it has to be more out, you can just pull it more out over here, okay, so that is one reference and now you can just start adding that things in. So existing material, again Lambert 2, and then start adding more and more. So all the things from this perspective, what I'm doing is I can just take from the front view, F. So if I just go to this panels, orthographic and front view. So I can see that all the things I can model from here itself. So here we have the mirror and what all the things, you can just use the revolve. I can just use from this itself. So all these bottles are there, so so many things which you can uh, do it from the same perspective over here. So even this shape, right, so how this shape is that and how this uh, rolling thing is over there. So again for this shape you can start with cylindrical shape and you can just extrude that uh, cylinder over here from that half part of that cylindrical shape. So let's start by doing this some cylinder. Over here, now press E, J. Okay, so just to find the shape of that, how the shape of this will be, press R now and go to the perspective view. Okay, so we don't need this much thick. Okay, so this cylindrical shape will be there, press F and what I want to do is I just need to extrude this out from the same faces. So I can just select the faces over here, so select this object, select the faces and let's select all this face. So I have this still here, anything top also if you just want to use, you can just use this all the faces. I think this will be fine. And then start extruding this out to get this shape. So shift right click, extrude face, press W. Scale this out, press R. Make it flat. This is what I can just make from the same shape over here. If there's any of these things you need to adjust, you can just get it. 
Why I'm doing this? Because I want this circular shape for that over here. For making that from the same shape. I'll just make only half. Half part you can just use it some other shape over there. So now if you feel that this part has to be a little smaller. So press scale and you can just make that small or you want to make it big. So any of these things. So you can just use that over here. So if you just want to add this now push it back this is fine and it is too thick so you can just make this press r scale it to a smaller size yes okay so i feel i can extrude from there also but it's fine so let's start adding some loops so insert edge loop tool here here press 3 in this place also you want some loop so it will be flat over here and from this part only it is going to come out so press 1 now I can just select this whole face over here so I can just select all these faces so I just make half half I'll just make a mirror of it now shift right click extrude face press R scale it down so there will be rod over here. So from this, again press G. G is for extruding. Again press R. Scale it down. G. W. Push it inside. And you want separate uh, rod over here. You can just add it separate or you just want to use the same thing. You can use the same. So shift right click, duplicate face. And I'll just use always use separate separate shapes for making that. Okay, so select the face now, extrude face, and just pull this down. How much you want that shape to be? I think it should be a little more smaller, thin size. So let's scale this down. Again, G, R. So you just want like this half part of it. And half part you can just make it over there. Okay, so you can just mirror this now. So select this faces, delete. And you want to mirror this. So go to modify, center pivot, SW. And adjust the pivot point to this uh, edge. So you can press D and V on your keyboard, and I can snap it. So it will snap to this point. And now you can just do the mirror. So go to mesh tools. Now uh, here uh, there is something mesh, and here you have the mirror option. So which axis you want to mirror it? So it's Y. Let's see this over here. So it's just this axis. Okay. And here it should be minus. And I can just push this little more far. So you have this offset option. Uh, how much you want to push it. So if you just want over here. How much is this length here? So till here. Okay, so offset we can just push it and later we can just change it. So if you just want to adjust the position of that one. So press 3 again and now we can just see the shape 5. So it will be like this. Okay. So anything you want to tweak it little bit, you can just start tweaking that out from the side view. Press 1. Now if you just press over here, if you want to just push that shape little up, press R, let's scale this to get that shape. This way. Okay, so now we have this shape. So, so all the segments we have added. So here also you can just add in some segments and let's start adding more loops for this. So inside edge loop tool, start adding some loop here as well. And start adding some loop here. So 
where and all we want to add the details, start adding that one. Object mode, press 3. That looks fine. Uh, now we want to add some kind of cloth on the top of this, uh, so like this towel. So we'll just use something called end cloth. So if you want to use that end cloth and try to add on the top of this, so save this file and later I can just change it. So you can just add some kind of plane. Okay, so for the curtain also you can use this end cloth. So I'll just show how we can just create a curtain also. So let's select this, much more bigger size. Enough and a mesh little bit smoothness I will give for this little smooth so it is having nice mesh and here if I just go to this FX option uh, you have something called end cloth so if I just give that create end cloth now okay so create end cloth now I think I can just delete the history first delete history and then create end cloth for this. Okay, so now if I just play that, what will happen is it will have that movement for this. So go for this. So it started simulating over here. But it is not colliding for this object, so you need to make sure that it is a collider. So select this object and this will be passive collider. So once I make that as a passive collider, what will happen is this will collide with that object now and it will bend that according to that cloth. See how much we want uh, until the simulation is over you can just start playing that. So you just have this much. Okay, so you can just see that how we can just do. And if it is a static object, uh, you can just uh, leave it like that. So let's select this now. Until you can see that simulation is fine. So if I feel that this is what it is fine for me and you want to tweak something, I can go to edit, delete all by type history again. So now it will not have any of this simulation. So it will be just there. Okay, so any tweaking you want to do, we can just start adding the tweaking for this. Now both these objects go to control G, go to modify center pivot W and I just want to place it here. So scale of that and all these things I'll just adjust now. So scale, scale it down. Let's start placing into my scene here where it should be. Little much closer to that. Okay, so if you want to scale it more down, you can just scale it. So group is there, so you can just scale the group and now we have this image is all here. Okay, existing, just use this Lambert 2. Okay, so for the curtains also we can do the same thing. Uh, so if you want to create the curtain and you want the movement inside the curtain also, we can just give some force to that. Uh, so if you have this curtain and I can also animate that suppose we'll just see this end cloth also so if I have this cloth press E J and rotate this now press scale scale down suppose if I just want to create some kind of curtain from that object over here and you want the curtain to be holding on the top Okay, so uh, we don't want the curtain to fall down, so we can just have this, uh, first you create the end cloth, create, so number of segments, if you want to increase more, I can just increase it little more, so this segments, this segments, I can reduce it, so let's use this more, so I can just see more sim simulation, now go to end cloth, create end cloth, and if you just start playing that now, what will happen is it will going to fall. 
Okay, so we don't want this uh, plot to be falling down over here. So we can just give some kind of constraint for this. So if I just right click vertex, select this vertex and go to end constraint and we have something called transform. So what will happen is it will hold that shape over there. So if I play now, so this part there is no constraint so you can just see that only this will be moving down like this okay so what i'll do is i just want some more constraint for this so if you want to adjust some folding or you want to make the curtain to move towards left uh, i can also add one more constraint and we can animate this constraints over here so if i go to this transform see this we have the transform constraint so this is what we have deselect this and I can move this so what we, what I want to do is I just want the curtain to be open so press S for set key after a certain time I just want it to move towards left and press S now if I play the simulation what we will see is over here is so it can just start moving towards left and press 5 So this. Yeah, this is huh. So we can just see that and now I am getting the wrinkles of that and uh, all the things. So if I am just add some constraint here also, so you can just have this. And we can give extra force for that also. So once it is there, so if you just want to have curtain moving and all, uh, we can apply some external force also for this. So select the cloth and here we have fields and force. So what kind of force you want to apply on the top of it? So if I want to apply air, let's apply the air for that. And if I come down to that air force, control A. So here we have the magnitude. So magnitude is the force, how much force it should be. If I increase the magnitude, now if you just start playing that, so press 4. So then start moving that towards something. It is becoming too slow. So some kind of external force when you want to apply on the top of it, whether it is applied to this or not, we don't know. So let's give some air, magnitude if I just give 100 and let's check that, so it should be more, it is not having certain direction for this but it has become very slow now. takes time okay so this uh, uh, for the sphere if you are seen inside that uh, movie right Bao will be seen for the sphere the cloth will be connected over there and the uh, sphere moves over here so that can also be done so you have to connect that uh, cloth kind of design to this and sphere you animate so it will also move all the cloth over there so you can just have whatever this simulation you want for this and this is how we have this and we can give as many constraints as for this so if I don't want this animation now I don't want this so we can just delete right click delete and now we have only this cloth okay so it is having that simulation on it. Okay, so we can also, uh, we don't want all the simulation every time, we can also have this option for catch. So what will happen is it will store all the data into the temporary memory. So I'll be able to slide inside my time slider and I can check it. So it will store all the data because every time the simulation will make your scene slow. So what you can do is you can create a catch for that and catch and let's see this so i'll just show that so for particles animation and all when we are doing that so we have to use that and catch suppose here now press s and simulation now if i just check that and it is very slow for me press 5 okay so it is very slow 
so what we can do is we can store this uh, animation data into temporary memory to check that animation uh, so you can go to catch and increase and this one we have this end object so you can just click on that and it will store that data so when I adjust the time slider uh, it will be fast so it is not going to calculate again all this uh, data over there and you can delete anytime this data if you are doing some changes you can delete that data temporary data and you can uh, again start working on it so how many frames I want to see that suppose 100 frames or 120 frame I want to uh, store that data inside this otherwise it will not play real time over there so just start doing this now and while doing this simulation here we have 24 frames per second so uh, you can make it as every pin so whenever we are doing the particle simulation or cloth simulation don't use as 24 fps so it won't uh, play smoothly so when i place as uh, every frame it will be much smoother to see the animation so now it is done let's see this now So now it will be faster. So once this is done, uh, let's press 5. Now if I just drag this slider, you can just see this. Okay. So it is not having any uh, memory now. Everything, all the catch is stored inside the memory. So just play. It will play that nicely. So you can just check that animation over here while doing Sir, that. If you, uh, hmm. you are playing uh, uh, huh. and then you place two frames hmm. like that. Huh. Then can you manually uh, uh, animation? Yeah, I am moving this, no? so I can just have this. There is some. Is, uh, if you, if you do the animation, you want to move the frame this side and make it this side. Huh, we can and move. That one that you want to see today is going to. Uh, we can move. So uh, how many constraint you are uh, adding? So that each point you can move. So if you also want some constraint over here, you want that to be going back and manually you want to move, you can also do. So here if I add some constraint for that, select any of this vertex constraint and you have this transform. Now this also I can move it, front or back. So it depends on how many constraints we are adding. Now we have this and all the data is stored inside this. So anytime you want to delete that, any changes you do, you have to delete that catch and you have to simulate again. So inside this there are different options for the cloth also. So if I go to the presets, so, yes. so there are a lot of cloth options. So whether you want like a water balloon, uh, whether you want like a honey, whether you want like a denim cloth. So how it should simulate, this is what we have this uh, silk. So if I replace that with the silk, delete this catch. And let's play that. So it will behave like a silk cloth, which will be very light over here. So if I'm just using the denim or rubber, it will be more hard while moving that. So here we have different options for it, and we can also change different attributes for that. So now I'm just doing this. So if I just use it over here, we have this airbag, honey, and there is t-shirt, leather. So if it is a thick leather. So it will not be that much soft. See that the the foldings are not coming inside this leather part much. There's not much folding inside this leather. But when I change it into a different cloth, you will see the different results on it. So this is what it gives for me. And you can delete that. Uh, now if I just want to place this curtain over here, I can just place it in this place and I can just have that. Okay, so, yeah, so this is what cloth can do. Uh, so any object you can also parent to the cloth and we can just make it. So this is what we have. And just start doing all these shapes over there. Okay, so uh, now to add some kind of lights to the scene. So we have done all this cloth simulation and if it is required, you can keep it. I don't need this now. 
Okay. So, what are the two sources of light during the daytime? What will be the light sources? Skylight is only the light source. What is the light sources during the daytime? Is it? Sun and sky. So, sky will give us the soft shadow and sun will give the hard, hard shadow inside the scene. Okay, so to create that we have to go to this rendering and Arnold, so this time I'll just use this Arnold light. Which one? The light is coming only from the window. Huh. And it's in the other part of the board. Yeah. So, there will be only one direction light and there will be only one direction light. Yeah, so there will be bounce, that light will bounce over there inside the scene. So something like global illumination we call, so uh, when it comes over here, so all the lights will bounce from this and it will come. So inside this we have different lights, so I have something like sky dome. So I'll just use two lights, you can also use this physical sky, which has the sky dome and uh, sunlight also. So but for this scene, I'll just use this sky dome. So when I use the sky dome over here, so I can just go for the perspective. I can just so some kind of environment has been created for this. Now if I just want to render and check that, so open Arnold render view. Let's check this how the scene looks. Like. Okay, so this is how the scene is now. Just by adding the skylight, I'm just seeing this scene like this. Okay, so there are certain attributes for the sky. So if I just want to check the skylight attribute over here, so we can just see that uh, AI sky dome, and here we can just see there are different attributes for the light over here: sky dome light intensity, exposure, and resolution for that. And we also have this color temperature. So if I click on this color temperature over here, I can change the color temperature of the room. Okay, so if it is a daylight, so it should be totally bluish. Okay. Okay, so it is towards blue. The temperature is going towards blue. So if I want more warm tone, I have to move towards left. So I get more warm tone over here. So if it is totally left, it will red. Okay, so if it is 3000, around that, you can just see that. Okay, so it takes time for us to uh, see that. And here we have an option. So if you are seeing a lot of noise inside the scene, there is something called samples. So I can increase this samples to 4 to remove. So once it renders, you will not see uh, noise inside the scene. So there are various reasons which, why we get the noise. It might be due to the diffuse, it might be due to the reflection, it might be due to the refraction. So that can be controlled inside the render settings. So first you just check with the normal material, simple material, you just add. Now you just see that there is... So this is still rendering, you can just see that over here. And to add something, some light which is has to come from outside, uh, what we'll do is we'll just add one directional light to the scene. So make sure that select this because uh, I need to see the direction of this light, where it is falling, how it is coming over here. So go to create light and it is not there inside this or not light the directional. So we have something like uh, area light inside this. So I'll just use some kind of directional light for this, press R, scale it and depending on the direction of this light, so I want towards right, so change the direction of this light over here and up, just check that and here you need to make sure that Arnold is on. So that is a software light, you need to make sure that Arnold is enabled for this and little exposure you give and then you just check your scene how, how it looks so play this button and now you can just see that so we have this light which is coming in this place now so you can just see that now exposure is less for that light 
Now add the more exposure for this. I can see this light over here. And just change the direction of this light. So press rotate like this. Just rotate, rotate. So I just start seeing that light. And if you want to make it down here. So where you want to place the light, I can adjust that light direction. Uh, this nice uh, place and we're getting the shadows also over here so our shadow for that light uh, and the temperature of this if you want more warm you can just adjust that more warm temperature okay so this is the directional light temperature and how much exposure intensity how much you want to add uh, and exposure so there are two options over here so I can just adjust that it's like this now let's see this over here once it renders okay so uh, before giving the material you fix the lighting and then you start giving the material uh, because it will take a lot of time to render so once you fix that uh, lighting so because there will be a lot of reflection refraction so once you feel that lighting is fine then you start giving the materials uh, it will be fast So let's see that we haven't given any Arnold material. So this is a default Lambert material. So if I just give some Arnold material, it will be much faster to calculate and stop this uh, render real time. So uh, your system will go slow if you switch on this and do the changes. So go for the perspective and let's select everything. So for now, let's select all the objects inside this. Go to Windows Outliner. And I just want everything to be selected over here and right click assign new material this time you use Arnold shader so AI standard surface okay so the color of this is white and I want to change little bit of the same color I can pick from here also so color pick from that and we have this uh, so I don't want any kind of reflectivity so roughness I'll increase one and I have this all this light existing and that if you miss something you can just change that to existing and let's go for the camera view render now so this is just a render uh, preview so actual render we can just see it and there is no light which is coming through that uh, because we have given some kind of transparency material for that and now we have given Arnold material which doesn't have the transparency so no light will come through that so you need to make sure that whatever this object is there so that should have transparent material so assign new material for that I'll just use shader AI standard surface and inside this we have a lot of presets I can choose that over here so if you just want glass just go to that and replace with the glass and you have this glass material it's as easy uh, so if you just check now check this render I'll have it. okay so just add some glass material and let's check this whole render which one? Huh. Uh, it is having the refractive index so if you want uh, a different material if it is liquid kind of material so what is the refractive index of that we have to put that value uh, huh. so by default it will be there so uh, if you are choosing some material like you have glass you have water and uh, different milk will have and there is something over here so these are this will by default will have but if you want to create your own for a diamond uh, refractive index will be different so that refractive index we have to add to this okay so for water it will be different for mirror it will be different so you can just have the chart of refractive index with you and then you can just start now let's see this so let it render and check that so only the two sources of light if you want to create a night scene uh, so then uh, the outside light will be less some kind of bluish tone you can give for the sky 
moonlight and inside you can just give a little bit of more orangish uh, feel for this uh, this light here so when you are creating more cartoonistic style it will be more blue uh, kind of thing so if you see in disney pixar and all the tone of that uh, warm and cool tone they will mix and give that lighting for this one so this is render and we can just see that now Okay, so on the uh, we'll start creating all the materials. Uh, next, we'll be adding different materials for this uh, shiniest shiny material, tile material for this, and this wall will just give different material. So first, you fix the lighting with basic material. Then each of this floor and all these things will start giving different materials for it. So we have to render this one single frame, how much time it takes. I haven't added still, it is rendering. So it takes time. Alan, Anand, Atar, Avi Vikram, Ayush, Daniel, Debarge, Devdar, Druva, Druva, Jir, Vikram, Divya, Gaurav, Indol, Kumar, Madhu, Manikonda, Manish, Mayank, Pratham, Rajamurgan, Ritam, Simantika, Sipranjali, Tejaswaru, Vyom, Manikant, all are actually. Inside down something. Still take, take time. 